What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. We are still working on this bus motor. It's been like a month of, uh, of playing with this thing. We got it all cleaned up. You know, it was leaky, it was crusty, it was dirty. The heads were loose, the pushrod tubes were crusty, the seals for those were leaky. Everything was leaking on this thing. It was horrible. Uh, what a mess. And look at now, we got it all cleaned up. Everything's shiny and tight and the valves are adjusted. Um, Chris came over and put a sump on this motor. Super cool. You know, this was ready to go in. I was really, really happy with, with this motor and I was excited to get this back in the bus. Uh, but you know how projects go. <laughs> can never just finish the stupid project take it out do all the work and then curveball we ended up with this uh, this is a custom built for me 1835 uh, put together by some friends we had down in San Antonio this has got a stock crank we got an angle 110 camshaft in there we got the full flow oiling we got the doghouse cooler on there um, it's got 044 heads on it, CB044 heads with the 45 by 35 valves uh, ready for that header to go on there. And then that made us have to make some new tins for the bottom and, and tweak and, and clean everything up there. We're just building a whole brand new motor. Um, we're putting all new stuff in there. This motor was built with the reduction boxes in mind for that bus so that we get low end torque um, and good power on the bottom end and not have to go crazy with the RPM. So we're not gonna go 100 miles an hour in that bus, uh, but we're gonna have no problem keeping up with traffic fully loaded with camper gear with my external oil cooler, with the fan on it and the thermostat, and then uh, running the dual CADs on there. Should be able to keep this temperature down really nice where we wanna keep it. Um, and it's just gonna be a way better, much more drivable bus. Um, so. We're going to keep this 1600 uh, for a shop motor. I'm just going to put the tins back on it, put it back together, make it runnable, probably start it on the start stand and just tune it and, and make it a plug and play backup motor. Uh, we'll be putting the 1835 in the bus, hopefully uh, in the next few days here. And then uh, we'll have the bus back on the road. It's killing me looking at that thing with no motor in it. Uh, I hate it. I want to drive that thing so bad. The weather's perfect and uh, we need to get this done. So let's zoom in a little closer. I'll give you guys a, a better, closer look at this motor. And then uh, we'll start putting on some of the tins and making it pretty and making it a complete motor uh, ready to rock. So come on, let's go do that. All right, so the first big difference between these two motors, um, one of them is got the old timey itty bitty little oil cooler uh, that sits right in the, the direction of the flow of the air. And the other is the doghouse. Uh, and what I can show you real quick, uh, super easy, because there's no tins on there. As we take our alternator, you can see that when that is on there and the fan is tight, uh, you know, the fan's blowing the air right across the oil cooler. It's a very tight tolerance. And then inside the shroud, there's actually shrouding uh, that blocks that so the wind, the air really goes through it. Uh, but that kind of dumps that hot air on the three, four side of the motor. Not exactly ideal uh, on an air-cooled motor. You want the coolest, freshest air possible. So the later models, they had this set up. Uh, it would be a different fan, obviously, but it's basically the same idea. Um, the air is gonna flow kind of in front of or behind, I guess, depending on how you view the motor uh, but it goes past the cooler and then you have that extra shrouding on the back uh, that takes some of the air and blows it across the cooler and dumps it out on top of the transmission area to get sucked out uh, by the passing wind from you know driving so that's a huge difference because now you're not blowing hot air across the heads uh, on the three four side or the the cylinders you know it's it's really bad uh, this is way better this is going to put fresh air that comes in from the engine bay half of it's going to blow through the, the shroud and down across the heads and half of it's going to blow out through the cooler super nice uh, and then we're using Andrig's fan probably should have grabbed that ahead of time uh, but we got Andrig's fancy polymer fan here uh, so that's going to sit in the same place but this moves more air uh, it's way lighter weight so it's takes less horsepower from the engine to turn it. Um, yes, the engine does lose a little horsepower turning the fan. It's not a whole lot, but when you're dealing with 60 horsepower 
you want everyone you can get. Uh, so this is definitely going to make an impact even on a small stock motor like this. Um, it's going to flow more air uh, and it's just going to cool everything down a little bit better. Um, so we're going to swap that out for this big heavy steel stock fan on the alternator when we put the shroud together uh, and then we'll get that all assembled and on the motor and then uh, then you know more tins after that. All right, that's the front side of the motor. We got the carbs on, we got the distributor on, um, got the linkage on, everything's hooked up. Super clean, super nice. I just absolutely love the look of this motor. Um, for hooking up the carbs, what I, what I went ahead and did, I wasn't gonna do it, uh, but because this is a, a later uh, Mexican fuel injection block, it doesn't have a fuel pump area, like it's blocked off. They don't, they use electric fuel pump. Uh, so I figured I might as well just go ahead and do it. Uh, this was the old mess, you know, fuel lines, rubber lines, replace them every year, total pain, got the filter in there. You know, what a mess, just awful. Uh, what I traded that out for, be careful we don't lose all the little pieces here. Uh, this is the Caddyshack stainless steel hardline kit uh, for the cats. And man, is it sweet, pre-bent, all the fittings are there. Everything's perfect. It fits right together. I'm super glad that I went ahead and did it. It's a little pricey. It's like 180 bucks. But if I tried to do this on my own, I would have never, I would have never been able to, to get it just right like this. This is pretty complicated. Doing it on Weber's is not so bad. Uh, but this has got all these crazy bends on it. So this is pretty sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Um, I'm not gonna explain to you how I'm gonna do it because it really just bolts into the two carbs. And then uh, this is the fuel inlet that'll go through the rear tent. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do it in super ultra mega double fast time uh, because it does take a little while to get everything lined up. Uh, let's go. All right, while we're looking at the back of the motor, uh, we have to address the sled tins uh, that go underneath to protect the push rods and also to help direct that air towards the back of the car as you're driving. You know, all the air that's coming through this shroud comes down through the head tins and it gets separated by that little plate uh, that's in there. And uh, it, it kind of goes around the heads through the fins and this gives it a direction to go out and not just sit there when you're idling you know, going right back up into the motor. Uh, this is what a stock head tin looks like. Uh, this would be the passenger side one. Uh, and they just kind of go under and they bolt to the back, you know, the back here, well, this side, just like that. And when you're running a header, uh, you can't run these because that header pipe, you know, it goes right through there. You can trim them and you kind of get some airflow direction and it, it kind of works, but the better thing, the right way to do it, uh, is to get these industrial tins. And you can actually go even further than this. Uh, Haptic Garage, I was watching them, uh, their show, ooh, not too long ago. I mean, he did it a while ago, but he made his own and it was perfect, tight. I mean, boxed in, beautiful. Uh, and I may do that in the future, but for now, 
I got the Berg head tin, uh, industrial tins. Uh, it's just kind of a Z shaped. And then I trimmed out a good portion of that. I don't know if you can see, you know, I trimmed out a good portion of that and, uh, and blocked it off with that piece. And then we folded over the metal and, and kind of made it as, as airtight as possible. So that when we bolt that in, that header pipe now has a place to sit, you know, it'll sit right in here and that'll keep it from heating everything back up. Uh, so that was pretty exciting, pretty intense. There's a million videos on how to do it. So I'm not going to show you how to do it um, because I didn't even do that good a job. Uh, it's okay. It fits. It's going to do, it's going to do what it needs to do, but uh, it could be better. And, and there's a lot of people that did it a lot better that you should learn from. So I'm going to bolt these on. Then we're going to put the exhaust on and then that's it. You know, then we got a, we got a motor that's ready to go in the car. Finally, uh, we'll deal with the fuel system and we'll deal with the oil system later. I've got all that stuff to do, but I got to get it prepped on the bus first. Then we'll bolt it when we put the motor in. So let's get these bolted in. We'll do a, a quick walk around of the motor showing off all our neat stuff. And, uh, and then we'll call it a day. Look at that man that is beautiful it's probably the prettiest motor i've ever had uh, i went all out and, and got everything i wanted on this one this is like the ultimate motor for me and i'm so happy with it um, it looks great it's going to perform great it's got the best parts available in it uh, so we know it's going to last a long time all that's left is really to put some oil in it put it on the test stand get it tuned and then uh, do the fuel system and the oil system in the bus to attach to this when we get this thing in there and we're good to go. Uh, we'll do a little walk around on it right now. So we've got, uh, you know, the CADs, these are the same CADs that were on it, but I put a bigger uh, Venturi's in there. We went up to 32's from the 28's and then we did the jets, uh, the, scrubbed off jets for the 1835 i had to get another set uh, we did their linkage as well caddyshack uh, center pole linkage here uh, super nice down low out of the way linear see it's perfectly straight um, so it gets a good action on there there's no, going to be no binding uh, that's really really nice we've got our same uh, 009 distributor with the protronics in it got some new eight millimeter wires um, just bigger to get a little more little more spark down there uh, we got the degree pulley obviously you see there's no fuel pump there because that's going to be a, a electric fuel pump that's part of what we need to put in the bus later uh, we've got our empty ceramic coated sidewinder header uh, which fit really nice it's a snug fit they're kind of hard to put in uh, but it's it's pretty good uh, once they're in they're in really nice uh, we've got the stainless steel caddyshack fuel uh, fuel line fuel rail whatever you want to call that uh, and it does mount directly to the shroud with some nice rubber mounts to keep it uh, from vibration uh, we've got Andrig's fan in there you're probably not gonna be able to see that but we got Andrig's uh, crazy fan in there we've got a, a awesome powder coating venturi ring on the back of the doghouse shroud uh, we did put a brand new MP doghouse cooler in there I've got a flamethrower coil uh, we mounted it to the back just to keep everything looking clean up front uh, but that is a brand new coil and that's uh, solid mounted uh, that's pretty pretty good there we've got our breather or our uh, 
crossover tube. I'm gonna have to do a little figuring out because this is pretty crowded over here where the crossover tube comes over. So I don't know. This we're gonna have to cut because I have a regulator that's gonna go over here um, or possibly on this side. I don't know. I gotta figure that part out too. Uh, we hung the muffler with the, the hanger that comes with it just so that's not bouncing around and that's not gonna cause a leak. Uh, later at the flange, you know, you want to wrap that nice and tight and then that bolts to the tab uh, That comes with the kit So there's that here's the back of the the roller throttle tube with the Teflon in it uh, On the other side It's the one that has the little rolly wheel in it uh, Takes the tension off of the cable. So hopefully we don't pop a throttle cable I do need to tie these back a little bit and uh, extend my coil connections here. Uh, they're just a little too short, but that's okay. Easy to do, easy enough. Uh, and then we'll get our, our full flow oiling plugged in when we get that in the bus. That'll be another day. So, pretty good, I think. I mean, it looks nice. We got that custom shroud, uh, old school from way back in the day in California. That was like the thing. Uh, and now I think a couple people are doing it again. It's getting brought back. I think Blaine's making one, so that's awesome. Uh, that's pretty much it. We'll have a breather tube off of each head and, and one coming out of here. Those will go to the back. I've got a little breather box we'll put in there. You know, but that's it, 1835 dual cads. Man, I can't wait to hear this thing run. Uh, they told me it sounded really good when they broke in the cam and that was with a 34 carb and just a hot dog muffler. So this will be a lot better, I think, with this one. This is going to sound pretty good. I'm so excited. Get this thing in the next few days. Uh, so come back on the next one and we'll be doing fuel lines and oil lines. And uh, get you a t-shirt down at the Teespring down below or the link down below. I don't know if we're using Teespring anymore or, or Bonfire or whoever, but the link's down there. You'll get it. Find the link. Uh, check us out at oldvolkstv.com. You'll get all the links to all our friends down there. They're also down in the description down below. Uh, I'll put part numbers for everything that I have that I could find uh, down in the description down below. Um, you know, those Berg industrial tins and the caddy kits and all that stuff. I'll put links down below so you can do your own. And uh, thanks for watching.